trenches. Ask a nigga what he branches. Triple digits, nigga. Don't forget to mention. Hold hard in the trenches. Ask a nigga what he branches. Triple digits, nigga. Don't forget to match. Don't forget to match. I got match. memories. Dead stain the whole room if I let him bleed. Shit was dark. I let this little light him out. Yeah, we got that light on death. Uh huh. Two. Oh, my lord. And my single games. I was hitting the single games too. <laughs> I'm over here getting my I'm over here getting my ass bust. <laughs> I'm telling you, I ain't bet nothing. Look, I, I yeah, didn't Dakota, put no I'm action on NFL games. Oh, I did. That's my <laughs> that's my cash cow, bro. But yesterday it won it won that. Yeah. I mean I, I hit some, but when you betting straight and you lose obviously you lose like six and you win three, you ain't you ain't coming up shit. So like I it was just right, it right. was just not good. At least I mitigated the loss hitting some of them jumps, but god damn boy, I was getting worse. Yeah, them NFL joints be so tough, man. I'd be like, I'm I am i am i am probably gonna start getting more on NFL action this weekend. Yeah, this I, well look, put it this way. You did the right thing. If you were skipping out on the NFL week, you did the right thing. Some people came up. I mean, obviously, you know, it depends on who you talk to. Yeah, but yeah. this one was a really <laughs> tricky week. Like there was so many obvious lines and it covered. Like there was no mystery, nothing like that. If you bet with the favorite, you, you won. And I, I yeah. tried to be super smart and fucked up so many tickets, bro. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, you know what time it is, bro. Let's go ahead and get into it. Let's get into it, man. Uh, welcome back to another episode of the Trap or Die podcast, everybody. Um, let's go ahead and get through the administrative things, man. If you're looking at us, looking at us live on Twitch. Uh, and, and you aren't following, go ahead, give us a follow right now. If you aren't YouTube, if you are watching the playback on YouTube and you're uh, you're not subscribed, give us a give us a do us a favor, like, subscribe, um, all that good stuff. Um, and if you're on the podcast listening, uh, while you're on the go somewhere, you know what I'm saying, or you want to work out or, or, or do your cardio and, and try and get some some uh, some watching football talk through your bloodstreams, uh, go ahead and give us a little subscribe, uh, rate, review. Do that right now. You know what I'm saying? It takes two seconds. Take your time out and get that get that done. And we'd appreciate it. Uh, so, with that being said, I got my boy Dre with me. Uh, um, Dre, man, you know uh, what'd you do? What'd you do yesterday, man? What, did you did you did you have a busy Did you have a busy Sunday, man? Did you watch any football? Well, you know, I schedule my days around us. You know, I like to you know get everything I'm doing you know, beforehand, and then I'll schedule stuff after. But as I told you, shit just was not going right <laughs> yesterday morning, man. I was getting so frustrated and pissed with everything that was going on. I said, Jamal, we will get the shit beat out of us today. Like, that's what I texted you. I said, you, you were surprised when I said that. I was like, man, yeah. I can just feel it. I said, the way this morning going, that's just what's going to happen. And shit, that's what happened, man. That shit came out of nowhere <laughs> when you said that. I was like, yeah, damn, bro, I just listened to you on the other podcast, and you, you talk about we about to get the done. Next day, you talking about, hey man, hey, I just got this bad feeling. The morning just been went terrible. We about to get our ass, <laughs> and, and I'm over here and I'm laughing because because of what you said, but also I'm like, bruh, I had the worst morning too, bruh. And this shit, I could not believe how terrible it's been already, and it's not even noon. <laughs> this shit is crazy. Um, <laughs> but I mean, like like everybody's here for man. Um, we're gonna we're gonna get some call in, so we're gonna start off with the Zoom right quick, so we can get our points off. Cause I know there are some people that, that did say they want to call us, so we want to make sure we get them that time. Um, but but we got to get our, our points off. We definitely missed the post game stream yesterday. We were all uh, going through some things, and uh, specifically me. Uh, I am the host, so uh, it was on me ultimately at the end of the day. But uh, we're here, so we got to get these things off our chest. Uh, first and foremost, Dre. Uh, um, I let's do it this way. I. I'm going to I'm going to give us the table the, the the open floor for us to just be critical and 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 just give us lead, lead wherever your mind wants to take you um and, and then uh we can try and find some constru constructive ways to to wrap this to wrap the conversation up um once we get through everything that we need to talk about uh and, and I guess I'll go ahead and get started uh, 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 make sure I'm <clears throat> yep Woo. all right there we go <laughs> I don't know why this team sucks so bad. I don't know. <laughs> um, and if I'm being honest, Dre, I thought about a lot of things uh, leading up to tonight's show. I thought about uh, which angle did we want to start with? Did we want to start? Did I want to start with the game itself? Did I want to start with 
the coaches? Did I want to start with the organization? Did I even want to start with the fans, bro? Did I where did I want to start with how so many things have gone awry? And ultimately, at the end of the day, it falls at Ron Rivera's feet. No matter what is going on with the players, no matter what is going on with the coaches, no matter what is going on with the organization, the organization is quiet. It's all about football right now. Like that name thing was all week three of the preseason and we haven't heard nothing from it since. Everything is on the feet of Ron Rivera. Everything starts and ends with him. He asked us, he asked us, I think week two of the preseason, he sat there. No, it was the fan night, the night that we all went out there on, on that, that random Friday for that practice. He asked us, we need to give it our all. He said, we need y'all. Y'all have to show up. We want y'all support. We need y'all support. We're going to do everything we can to make sure that we put out a, pro a product that y'all are proud of and make this area, make the city proud. Dre, right? This, is, this has been the worst fucking team that I have seen. And I, I don't know. I'm not even going to exaggerate to that extent, but I will say this is the, this is the worst that I could have expected. I just put it that way. I'm not going to say the worst sense. I'm not going to put any, any of those expectations out there. This is the worst team that we could have expected from Ron Rivera and company. Yes, we could have seen a regression given that we were playing defense, or excuse me, teams and offenses in which that's going to challenge us and, and make, our, make our lives a little bit more difficult on the defensive side. But who would have thought the second-ranked defense in the NFL last year, albeit against backups and, and, and non-starters and stuff like that, but the second-ranked team statistically um, last year ends up bottom, bottom fourth, bottom third of the NFL. They are terrible. They are terrible. And honestly, I, I have not seen – when you – you have to take your eyes and believe in for what they see for what for what they are. There are sometimes when you when you talk about quick fixes and things like that that can kind of nullify or, or mitigate the damage that's going on. That that sometimes those exist, but when your your issues go beyond bad play from from your stars and it goes to communication and it goes to just not being on the same page from a from a from three different levels of the team. Me me you and Manny talked about this last week, like. These things we were willing to give a pass last week and just see if they can come across things. It, it and it, it doesn't improve. Like it's is no such thing as a quick fix in that regard. Um, this was supposed to be the backbone of the team. This was supposed to be something where we can say, all right, the offense ain't here, but this defense is gonna keep us in the game. Buffalo Bills, Ron Rivera called it a measuring stick. He raised the expectations of this game. He put that in the public. He told us that he expects his team to see, or he wants to see where his team is at against the Buffalo Bills. Full, we got smoked. Great, we got smoked. And to be honest with you, if it wasn't for that that fluke yes, kickoff, if it wasn't for that fluke kickoff that that got us in position to score that 14th, that second touchdown, that 14th point, Brian, I don't even, I don't know how how much worse it would have got. I don't know how much worse it would have got. Um, so I'm gonna just hand it to you because I, I can go on and on. I'm gonna go on and on, and I know <laughs> I will, but I want to let things uh, we can have a conversation here, bro. But it starts with Ron Rivera, it ends with Ron Rivera. Um, he's telling us all these things in the media, he's trying to, he's trying to be as uh, hard shelled but as uh, disciplinary as possible, whatever the word is. You find it, and 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 y'all Webster, me, tell me, and that shit is backfiring right now because. Clearly, his players aren't listening, and if he thinks that this thing can be fixed at the snap of a finger, uh, shit, show us. Because at this point, I'm tired of hearing all this talking, bro. I'm tired of hearing all the talking, bro. Dre, go ahead. You got the floor, boss. Yeah, I mean, you pretty much summed it up best. Like I said, Ron Rivera, before the game, he said this was a measuring stick. And when I was on um, the Burgundy Zone podcast the other day, you know, they asked me, what were my expectations going into this? And I said, okay, if we're talking about a measuring stick game, then it's three ways you can look at it. So it's three ways you can measure yourself up to this team. One of those is if you win, your expectations get raised. If you lose in a competitive game, you're probably going to be looked at as this competitive dogfight team. You'll probably be in every game this year. But if you get go in there and get blown out, 
then we get to take those expectations way down. And now the season outlook is just poor. I mean, I don't care. I mean, I know it's a long season, but that was just such a demoralizing loss. I mean, they can they can bounce back, like I said, because it's so early in the season. But as a from a fan's perspective, you know, it's hard to just watch your team going like and just lose the way they did because they didn't look prepared from jump. I mean, you saw the defense making the same mistakes that they made two weeks in a row, and they probably looked worse this game. I think that was the easiest game Josh Allen probably had in his entire career. Like watching him, I never seen, you know, a quarterback so it easy. He was just laughing the whole game, you know, like this is I can't believe what I'm facing. You know, I'm looking at the stats, Cole Beasley. 11 catches for 98 yards. That just tells you the middle of the field is just sweet. That you can just go in the middle of the field, get whatever you want. Every time I, I mean, as soon as the ball is snapped, a guy is wide open from jump and he has no one around him. You know, third down and four, no matter what, what situation it is on third down, it could be third and four, third and 15. If it's third and four, guys going to play 10 yards off. And that's in the middle of the field. That's on the outside, whatever. You're leaving guys open. They're going to get the first down every time. I've never seen a team that poor on third downs. And like I said yesterday on Twitter, I've watched a lot of football this season. This is by far the worst defense I've seen in the league. I mean, the 32nd ranked team, I think we're 31st ranked right now. <laughs> the 32nd yeah, team yeah, probably don't even look this bad. They probably got one game. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They probably had one game where they just looked off their, or they skewed their numbers so high. But us, it's every game. Every game, everyone does what they want to do. Every quarterback looks like an MVP against us. So it's just frustrating and maddening to see the same issues for this coaching regime so far where we're talking about preparation. If this was Jay Gruden, we'll be killing his ass talking about, oh, he never has his teams prepared. And you go in there, you start getting smoked 21 nothing in this game. Even when they cut the lead to 21-14, it still felt insurmountable because your defense had to get back on the field at some point. Like, you never felt like the defense was going to get off his any chance or slide in that game to keep it close. And the offense couldn't because Buffalo's defense is elite. But – the defense gave them no shot, and this has been three weeks now, and it's very disappointing because you look at the coaching staff and you look and you think those guys are supposed to have it together. Yes. Um, appreciate everybody who's joining in. Uh, we're, we're really just getting started. Uh, Mr. Cole, 315, thank you for the follow. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we will be taking call-ins shortly. We just want to make sure we get our things off our chest and then obviously open the, the phone lines for everybody who wants to get things off of their chest as well. Um, Dre, um, Washington's third down offense is uh, 9 of 34 uh, on the season. Um, their opponents on third down are 27 of 46. Uh, that's 58.7% uh, conversion rate. Um, and then for the offense of Washington, that's 26.5% uh, for the offense. That is 32nd in the NFL on offense. That is 31st. I said 30th yesterday, but it's updated numbers. They're 31st in the NFL on defense now. Um, to catch up on some 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 comments, my bad. I didn't mean to neglect the, the comments, man. Um, Jarian mentioned, yeah, it was bad play all around. He already seen the media in a, in in defense of the quarterback yesterday. He was part of the problem. We all gonna talk about a Heineke for a second. Everyone failed yesterday. Um, Sleezo. Bam bamboozled. Oh Lord, yes, the defense. Um, yes, bamboozled for sure. <laughs> um, oh, as I flipped the channel to the Chiefs and Chargers after Taylor threw that idiotic pick and watched a year two quarterback go down the field on a on the road in the face on the road against the face. Jesus, guys, I can't read from the AFC. All I can think of is how much I hate that we essentially haven't had a fran. Oh my God, yes, I have haven't had a franchise quarterback all all of my life. Um, I don't see them bouncing back against Atlanta. Uh, Jerry had mentioned uh, Atlanta is not as easy as some is saying, though. There is a tough strength, strength of schedule coming up. I'm um, and then Zay. What's going on, Zay? I hope all is well with you. Uh, Bossa got to go. The, uh, it don't matter how much of a brainiac he is. Um, that hey, look, that's a fact about Bossa, man. I don't, we can talk about Bossa till we're blue in the face. And truth be told, coach is going to be like, uh, you know, he is who he is. We need him, we love him. Uh, he is the, the backbone of this defense, which is bullshit. Uh, it's bullshit. All right. <clears throat> So, again, we mentioned the conversion rates, Dre, and, and I guess to, we, we talked about the defense and we can talk a little bit longer, but let's let's do a little brief talk on this offense. Um, I, I saw a number where there was X amount of drives. There was a high number of drives where the, 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 the offense only ran three plays before they had to punt the ball. 
And then there was only two drives, maybe three, I believe, in the Buffalo Bills game where they had more than three plays on that drive. One of them was the 70 yarder where Antonio Gibson housed. Uh, another one, I think, was the one in the red zone after the um, the kickoff cover, cover, fumble, whatever the hell that was. Um, so not only did Washington's defense fail them, and they didn't have, they wouldn't have had a chance the way that defense played yesterday. That offense gave them no chance to win either. Um, from a standpoint of not converting on third down, from the standpoint of uh, not being able to just keep, stay off the field, I mean, stay on the field for your defense to recover. And then on top of that, untimely turnovers, uh, Logan Thomas converts a third and long. Uh, first off, the fact that they were in the third and long to begin with was frustrating. Uh, I can't remember exactly right now how they set it up, but they convert the third and long, and then all of a sudden, Logan Thomas is fighting for yards, ball comes out. After that, Taylor Heineke throws three interceptions. All three are bad. One of them gets called back because of a penalty, but he throws three interceptions. Um, we, we talked about how big of a game this was for Taylor because we're going to see him in a situation in which uh, we haven't seen him before. Three home games for, for, for him, uh, four uh, four home games for him uh, with Washington, his first road game, his first road experience, uh, his first one with fans at that. And Dre, I'm going to hand it to you with Taylor, but that was just, it was not pretty. Um, and I'm not going to crucify him for one game, but there is a lot to that's, that needs to be said about um, the, the flaws that kind of creeped up and showed itself against the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, Taylor had a rough game yesterday. And, you know, um, I like Taylor. I mean, I like what he's shown um, in the previous games. But I mean, you got to call it how you see it. And yesterday wasn't a good game for him. I mean, like I said, like you said, some of his flaws showed up in the game um, that it came to bite him. Some of them, some of them were kind of prevalent in other games. But when you're playing against an elite defense, some of those things you just can't get get away with. And Buffalo is an elite defense. And they have been for years. Leslie Frazier knows what he's doing. And it was a tough game. Um, like I said, it wasn't helped early on when you get two drives stalled for stupid stuff like the J.D. McKissick penalty on the first drive with the pass interference. I mean, I don't know. That, that was questionable, but either yeah. way, that's, that's something that kills you. And then, like you said, Logan Thomas, second drive, fumbled, and then that's when everything just goes downhill. But Taylor tried to do too much in the game. Um, I didn't think he tried to stay – I didn't think he stayed within himself. He even admitted after the game that he was trying to, you know, bring them back all the way down – on one play, which you can't do. I mean, especially not against that defense. Buffalo is too good of a defense. But again, um, you know, for the people that say with Heineke out there is good games that you have to see more. I don't think we I don't think it's fair to say after his first bad game against an elite defense that you've seen it all at this point. So you know what I mean? Like we still he's still in the evaluation process. It's still a couple of more weeks. He he gets to start and show, you know, what he can do. So um I'm gonna give him a couple more weeks, but that was a rough game. You hope that's not something that's gonna carry over. I mean, just for the team's sake, you know, the team's sake moving forward. You wanna you have to be able to do something on offense. And if the quarterback's turning the ball over at a high rate, then you know <laughs> it's already bad enough the defense is what they are. You don't want the offense to start, you know, turning into that turnover offense because then you have no shot in any game. So, uh, Mr. K.O. said, "Here, here's my thing about the O, um, though. Last year, all we wanted was a quarterback that could get us 21 points and not turn the ball over. We knew that the offense was not to the level of the defense. Um, and let's not forget how good Buffalo is. That is a complete deep playoff team. Um, I think that's important to note. Uh, and actually, you, you helped me out because I was, I, I had forgot about this point that I was going to bring up. Buffalo is good. I actually picked them to go to the Super Bowl. And, and I and I told you, and we talked about it, so it's not like I'm telling you this. It, was, it wasn't it was news to you, Dre. Um, we talked about there was going to be one side of the ball that was going to make up, a, make like have their get right game, whether it was Washington's defense or Buffalo's offense. Um, and we knew how explosive or how, how much potential that offense had, just as, as good as the defense for Washington, uh, how we perceive it to be. And like, it wasn't even close in terms of a matchup. Like they, we, we talk about the talent, that Washington has, but this talent is getting dominated. And, and Buffalo's offense showed up and showed out. Uh, so while we're talking about them being a Super Bowl contender, um, in my eyes, I think they are, uh, you don't anticipate losing by 21 points. 
And truth be told, you don't anticipate like it's it's something you, you don't anticipate giving up 40 points with this type of defense. You don't anticipate that. Um, and that's kind of where uh you gotta understand the the differences between accepting that it's Buffalo, but also understanding if your defense is the strong suit of your team, you don't give up 40 points, but you also don't lose by 20 something. Like that's just not kind that's that's not that's not a, a good assessment. Like any type of perspective after that goes to the fact that uh, you have to face the music. I've been saying that all day. You have to face the music uh, and just understand that your defense is not where it's at. Uh, or, and, and and for me, I'm not, I don't like to do the doom and gloom thing. I'm just being real. And if the real, for, I'm, be, I'm speaking my truth. And if the real does not sound positive to you, or if there's no light at the end of the tunnel, the way it's sounding, I'm sorry. Um, I'm just saying that this defense has a lot of problems and I don't think uh, them like benching a player or them doing exclusively man or them doing exclusively zone is going to help them. I think it goes a little bit deeper than that, Dre. Yeah, um, and I couldn't agree more. And as far as, like I said, a lot of fans have to realize too that part of being a fan is calling the games how you see them. You know, just like when you win, you're happy that you win. We speak, we say good things about them when they win. And when they lose, we're going to call out the bad things. We're going to say the bad things about them. I mean, that's what fans do. So, I mean, you know, so many people get caught up in, oh, you're being too positive. You're being too negative. No, we're just calling things as we see it. We watch these games. Everyone watches them. So, you know, there's no need to sit there and lie to yourself. Like anybody that will sit there and defend the defense yesterday will be crazy. Like that defense was atrocious. It was embarrassing. Like I said, this is probably one of the worst defenses I've seen. This looks like a Joe. I mean, as far as Washington goes, this is like a Joe very defense. I mean, even um, uh, some of Jim Haslett's defenses, even I probably would take a Jim Haslett defense right now over what we oh, have, bullshit. because I mean, they just can't get off the field. They're, they're incapable of getting off the field. And it's so frustrating. Like that first drive of the game, even you texted me right after that, that third and 15, that's when I just knew. I said, this, this is, this the is a shit defense drive. and they can't stop anyone because it, it was so easy. Like, third and 15, that guy is sitting there wide open. I mean, Josh Allen had all day to throw. I mean, he was going to find somebody. And you just got this guy sitting in a zone. He's just there waiting for this catch. Third and 15. And, you know, and that's to speak on, like, our side of the ball. That's one of the things that annoys me. Like, that first drive when J.D. McKissick, he had the uh, the pass interference thing we talked about. It brought us back to third and 12. I knew we had no shot in hell of completing that third and 12. I mean, it's unfair to expect an office to compete, uh, complete a third and 12 because that's just not what you want. That's, that's not normal. the situation you want to be in. That's very normal. That's the point. Yeah, like, exactly. It's normal to that's not normal. convert a exactly. third and 12. Like, you are – that's in the exactly. defensive favor. Yep. And, and we've seen this – uh, quite a few times on this defense. Now, the teams easily get these third and longs on us. And I actually expect it now, like to the point where if it's third and 12, me and my son, we watch the game together. Me and my son watching the game, I said, son, watch this, third and 12, they're going to get this third and 12. A third and third and 15, they're going to get this. He'd be like, oh, dang, dang, it ain't, you know, <laughs> you was right. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. you know, that's just frustrating. Like you said, on when, when we know on our end, we have no shot in hell of doing it. Or if we do complete it, it's going to be a damn accident. It's probably going to be like, the hell do we do that? It was, must have been blown coverage or something. But it doesn't even look like blown coverage on our end when we let it happen. It just looks like that's just how it just happens on our defense. Yeah, man. Um, that's where we're at. Uh, so we're going to continue some conversations here, but we're going to go ahead and transition to the phone line. Um, so I'll open the phones. 443-242-4479. Um, uh, I'm going to put the number in the chat for you all. And uh, you guys can get ready to get the calls. We're going to set that up in about two minutes, but this is the number for you. Again, 443-242-4479. You can call us. Um, you can get things off your chest too um, about this Washington football team and, and what do you think the outlook is and, and can things get better uh, this early into the season? Can they, can they turn things around? So uh, here's the number, and then we will be right back after this break. Uh... Boom. All right. Preparing one minute. Hey, we ain't got to do that right now. Okay. We're back. Um, Dre is here. Uh, I have the, for those who, who aren't aware, man, um, 
I have to have this little setup when we do the call in just just so we can get rid of uh, we can block the numbers that be calling in because Skype is not that fancy. Um, I can't <laughs> block everybody's phone calls and things like that. So I mean phone numbers. So uh, with that being said, uh, we do have a call in right now. Uh, Dre, let me get some some music from you. I mean some noise from you right quick. Just make sure I'm picking up on the stream side. Yes, yeah, sir. Can you hear me? All right, bet. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and get this call in. This is good. Boom, there we go. Uh, I think I know who this is, but just to be safe on, on the safe side, uh, who this? And hello, welcome to Travel Down. Yo, you stupid. <laughs> hey, you, you know you caught me right in the midst of changing pampers, dog. I'm in this oh, joint. man. I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to hurry up and get them sleep before, uh, before the game come Monday on tonight night so night. I can catch it. Hey, do do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I got Philly plus three and a half. I saw what you said in the chat earlier, but um, I, I ignored it. I need I need I need Philly tonight, man. I got money on this game. Now, was that an emotional bet, or was that was that a? You, I know hey, you don't you don't play say, when it comes to money, so yeah, hell no, nah. that, <laughs> that ain't emotion. <laughs> that ain't emotion, man. I I just got this. I got this thing like Philly. Philly kind of does their thing against Dallas, man. Not in the sense that they always win, but it's it's always tight games, bro. So, um, I'm I'm gonna oh. rock out with Philly tonight and and uh, plus the three and a half and just see where it goes, bro. I, I like their defense, so. I, I I I'd like to think yeah. that they know they know Dallas. I'd like to think so. After watching them from the, throughout the first two weeks, they, their defense is definitely legitimate. Mm -hmm. That's not even a question. Unlike yeah. somebody else, you know. But hey, hey, look, that's that's, that's what you're here for, Brad. So uh, we got I got uh, the, the, the couple times you called, I ain't had, I ain't had Dre on. Dre on with us today because we won't. Oh, I forgot to tell people we won't be here tomorrow. Um. But you know, I'll break oh. that down at the end of the show. So yeah, Dre's here. What is the the uh, the co-host um, of the Travel Dive Podcast? So everything everything set in stone for you to get things off your chest, bro. Let's have that conversation. Well, you already know where I'm at. Well, I, and I and I sent you a, a voice message earlier. Yeah. As to why you know, and, and I mentioned this. Everybody in the media is saying you know you gotta relax. Uh, we could be two and two next week. And, you know what I mean, we got the Falcons. Well, one, the Falcons aren't a gimme. And two, that's obvious. Like, we all know that we have the Falcons next week. We all know that we can be two and two after next week. But the frustration is that we are – everything that we invested in, the defensive side of the ball, that is – that is it seems to be falling apart. And, and honestly – of course, it's fixable, but as bad as they are, one, it, it's far below expectations, and two, at this point, it doesn't even look fixable. And what I what I said to you earlier, everybody's mentioning the rebuild. We're the only team that can rebuild in the rebuild because <laughs> yes. if the defense is the foundation, if the defense is the foundation of this team, this organization is riding on the back of the defense, and they aren't doing it. And we invested all this, all these draft capital, all, all, all the salary that we spent on, on defensive players, and they aren't doing it, and that's the foundation. Well, guess what? We're rebuilding again. We were supposed to be building towards something. I understand the Bills, they were clearly about it, but this, is, this isn't, it wasn't just the Bills. You look terrible against the Giants. This looks like Greg Minuski defense. I thought we were getting away from that. And it's like that's what was so frustrating about yesterday. I turned the game off in the third quarter. You would have never thought, like, Chase Young, he didn't even show up. Like, where have you been? You know what I mean? Like, John Allen, double team, I get it. But, like, dude, like you said, at some point, we got to start having results, dog. Like, hey, Martell. Why? It, 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 it feels like a never-ending cycle. It's in order to rebuild something, you actually have to build something. At this point, I'm thinking we're just playing football multiple seasons in a row and just watching time go by. We're not building towards anything. That boy, That's Miles Garrett, had That's four and a half sacks did. yesterday, uh, Cleveland versus Houston. Miles Garrett had four and a half, bro. It's, it's just crazy, dog. Honestly, it, it was so frustrating to watch. What did it for me was the 17 play 
93-yard drive. And, again, I said this to you earlier. To me, that that is a team – when a team goes 17 – I do that in Madden, bro. I just be <laughs> playing around when I do that. When a team goes 17 <laughs> plays on you, it's really like, dog, you know we doing, we, we doing whatever we want right now. And you just in our way. You're not even really in our way. We just going to take our time. They got every – they converted every third down, fourth down. Like, and I knew, like, on, on play 14 or whatever, I said, this is going for seven. This ain't no field goal drive. This is going for seven. And guess what? They capped it off. Dude, wide open in the back of the end zone. Touchdown. Get out of my face. You suck. You some shit. Stop. Get, get off the field. You don't belong here. And this is a defense that's supposed to be elite. Stop. I don't want to hear nothing from the national media when I turn on Fox and we turn on the game on Sunday. Please do not mention that D-line. Please do not mention that defense. They are some shit. Everybody, they suck. Hey. Uh, That's where I'm at, bro. Yeah. And Until they selling food, dog. I, I think one of the questions that I had, and I, I think I'm going to ask you this, uh, Montel, while you're here. Uh, one of the questions that I had for Dre, and, and I, we might as well all talk about that right quick. Um, this may be pre- premature, but like you kind of know where I was getting at, Dre, throughout the, 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 the whole podcast to this point. Um, so, so the question for me is, uh, is like how much worse could it get for Washington or are we at the bottom of the barrel? Like, like it could it get worse for Washington or like we're there? Like, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to leave it to y'all open, open-ended question. Uh, Montel, what, what do you think, bro? I've seen this team hit new lows over and over, bro. it don't, it don't, it, of course it can, it can always get worse here. We are, like, I compare us to the Jets, bro. Like, when I see the Jets, it's like they can't do anything right. When you keep having new lows, when you keep having to, quote, unquote, rebuild, that is hitting a new low. When you keep taking your fans on these cycles where it feels as though, okay, we're gaining some momentum, and then you snatch us, you snatch the rug right from under us, that's another low, though. Like, I heard Scott Van Pelt on, on Kevin Sheehan. I'm going to let your boy get the floor. He said the Baltimore Ravens, when they came back and get the Chiefs, that was an organizational type of win for them. That is who they are. Bro, this is who we are, bro. And I think fans got to come to accept that. No, there is no progression. My, my dad told me we got to draft such and such. Whoever put on this jersey, they not good. <laughs> that's the reality Bruh. of it, and and, and and until things change for the better, that's who we are. Dre, what you got, man? Yeah, I mean, I, it's a long season so far. Like I said, I am not happy with what I've seen right now. But it for me, if you're still like I said, the Falcons game, that's not a gimme game, but. They're looked at around the league as a team that's not so good. But for us, that's not a gimme game at all because we're not good at either. Either I mean, if you look at what we play, we're not a good team. We're a bad team right now, so we can lose to anybody. And if that and with the schedule you have, like I say, you lose to the Falcons, you lose to the Chiefs, like you're supposed to, and a couple of other good teams that you're going to face this year, then you get to a point where you're like what one and eight, two and nine, or whatever. Two and nine, if you like. Whenever the trade deadline is, yeah, yeah, if you're lucky. But whenever the trade deadline is, I'm reconstructing my team. I'm I'm starting to sell some of those defensive players you said were so t- talented. And then I'm I'm reconstructing. I'm looking to build up the offense. And, you know, you'll keep a couple of guys. You don't have to sell off everybody on the defense. But start building what the rest of the NFL is doing at this point. We we try defense, even though it's no excuse for the defense to be as poor as it is with the talent we supposedly have on this team. But if you're going to sit up there and lose with this defense like that, I'm reconstructing this team at some point. If you're going to just bottom the hell out, and then that's that's going to be a real rebuild. It's crazy that that's even crossing our minds as fans right now. You got to start to get rid of pieces on this defense. That is crazy. That that is. Yeah. That is a thought. Think about that. Like, coming into this season, they had us ranked number one. Yep. Crazy. They, um... This is worth beating the league. Yeah, um, and, and I said... Let's hope it don't get there. 
Yeah, let's hope. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna leave you with one thing, Montel, before before you get off, Brad, because I appreciate you calling always. Um, Taylor Heineke, uh, the quarterback thing is always important, man. So I'm gonna let that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you that open floor on, on Taylor, and then uh, you go ahead and get back to them Pampers, bro. Them stinky Pampers. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, so, so with me, I it's hard for me to be hard on him because I didn't think he was. Deshaun Watson or Josh Allen or anybody like that. I look at him as a quarterback who needs help. If his defense could have made a couple stops, if Logan Thomas don't fumble the football, he made some plays. He made some plays with his legs to get us back in it. He is resilient. He threw a touchdown early in the game. But the the bad decision is like, for me, that's expected of him. Like, honestly, it's like who – it's, it's all about who you thought he was. I don't think Taylor Heineke is, is an elite QB. I think he's a quarterback that needs help. And yesterday was a game where we couldn't even run the ball because of it was 21-0. Irv, like, he, he needs help, bro. Like, he's not a quarterback that's going to be – that's going to sit up here and, and shoot it out. Nah. He needs a run game. He needs a defense. He needs some play action. And yesterday you had none of that. So I, I can't – I just can't really make up for what we didn't have anywhere else, it seems like, except for – I feel so bad for Tony McLaurin. I seen a, a picture on Twitter. It was a, like a Corvette beside a beat-up house. And it was like Tony McLaurin in the stand. Like, <laughs> outside of McLaurin, dog, like, what do – what do, nobody – I'm going to let y'all do it because I'm – I'm, I know, bro. My bad, Tony. I get it. We feel I, you. No, <laughs> hey, I, I will see you next Monday, uh, seven o'clock sharp. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Talk about the same old thing. You it. <laughs> like, no, nah, hopefully not. Hopefully, hopefully we get a dub, bro. Hopefully, you're talking about a W. Hopefully, yeah, you're talking about a W, bro. Hopefully, the Cowboys lose tonight, which they don't even matter. But I'm gonna catch up with you, big dog. All, All right, right bro, brother. You be safe, man. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's go ahead and catch up on a, a couple a couple comments. Um, highlight, man. Hey, I, I appreciate you checking in as always, uh, big dog. Um, hope all is well with you. He said our defense is looking like trash, and defense has been missing since January. I wonder if Tampa Bay like laid out the blueprint for for those teams that we've been seeing early on in this year, like um, San Diego, San Diego, Los Angeles. Uh, New York and um, Buffalo, for that matter, um, they they have not struggled, and we we could not stop a nosebleed against Tampa either. Like we we had a couple sacks, you know, by the grace of God against Tom Brady, but uh, at the end of the day, five hundred yards, thirty some points, you know, it, it was a it was an issue. Um, so yeah, defense has been missing since January. Um, o said yes, we needed a franchise we need a franchise quarterback since forever ago, and and during Montel's uh, response with Taylor. Uh, oh, mentioned that it's not about Taylor Heineke. It's about the fact that they even went with Fitz over the summer. Um, now, the only reason why I push back on this one, though, oh, uh, in retrospect, like it, it's all the options that they had. I, I will stand by this to this day. I will still say it was either Jameis Winston or Ryan Fitzpatrick. I, I thought those are the only two competent quarterbacks who knew how to actually play the quarterback position. Um, in terms of like their skill set and their awareness and then just their overall, overall competency at the position. So I will still stand by that. Um, the issue, though, is that they never really had a quarterback competition. And the day you signed Ryan Fitzp- Fitzpatrick, um, that was never going to happen over the summer. Uh, Ryan Fitz- I mean, excuse me, not Ryan Fitzpatrick. Ron Rivera, again, the person who I placed the blame on um, over all of this that's going on three weeks in the season, uh, he told us that he believed in competition. That was a mistake to to not do that with Dwayne Haskins. Will Dre, um, look, preseason came and went. Uh, off season activities and workout schedules came and went. There was no indication that there was even a quarterback competition. There was a firm quarterback one, and then there was a firm quarterback two. Yep, and. <laughs> that's why I gotta agree um, with that because, like you said, you know we we we've heard it over and over and time and time again that they went after Matthew Stafford. They offered a considerable package. I think they offered the best package that um, Detroit could have gotten. But 
Stafford wanted to go play at LA, which is okay. That's fine. He playing with a genius and Sean McVay. Um, I get that. So other than that, there weren't too many options um, out there. The only thing it was, I was like, if you're going to go with Fitz, you got to have a real quarterback competition, which they didn't. So, I mean, what can you do there? But uh, Taylor Heineke ends up starting anyway. But again, um, you played against a Bills defense that's pretty elite. Heineke showed in that game that, you know, he's not exactly, you know, the guy that you want to see. But at the same time, like, you still want to give him more because what else you got right now? Other yeah. than Kyle Allen, you have Taylor Heineke right now. You go to so Kyle Allen, you, you just let him. Move. Oh, yeah, right. I mean, you're just punting at that point, you know. So, like I said, you still want to see more um, from Heineke. The Bills are the Bills. I mean, they'll do that to a lot of quarterbacks. I mean, shit, they did it the week before to the Dolphins. I mean, they put two out the game pretty early, and Brissett couldn't do anything. Big Ben looked pretty mediocre against them. I mean, they're going to make a lot of quarterbacks look that way. So, it's not too much of a knock on Heineke that he had a rough out, and I think some of it is exaggerated. You know, from the fans, so, oh, he's a bum, he's this, that, and the third. I don't know if he's a bum yet. I mean, I know he looked bad yesterday, but I don't know if he's a bum yet. I mean, you know what I'm saying? That's a, that's a tough defense to go against. But it was something else that, you know, we were mentioning. Um, on the Chase Young and, you know, your boy Mar- uh, Montel mentioned it, Chase Young and them, they're not doing anything. When they do, when they when they get the pass rushing, they don't even look like they're getting close to the quarterback. And that just that's crazy to me. It's like, I feel like they call it a defense. Now, I don't think this is what they're calling. I'm exaggerating here. But it feels like they're calling a defense when they're just telling the defenders, don't go after the quarterback and stay in the lane. You just stay right there. You know, don't don't even try to beat the offensive line. I mean, that's what it looks like. I mean, it's like, the, you know, and Chase Young, as talented as he is, I've watched him play at Ohio State. I know what this guy can do. And it's like he is not even getting close close to the quarterback. I mean, even kind of Montez Sweat, he doesn't even look like the guy we've seen last year. So what the hell is going on? And then I haven't listened to Sheehan's podcast yet, but apparently this guy watching the football Twitter all round up. But apparently Sheehan just put out there today that he heard things that none of the defense, a lot of the defense linemen were complaining about the techniques that the coaches want them to use, and they've been pushing back on them. I don't know how true that is. That's what she put out there. I think but he was so, reiterating the, the 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 situation from last year. I, I think I did hear. It. I think he was re- reiterating okay. that, and he was saying that at one point he mentioned that at one point uh, Matt Ioannidis actually Matt wanted, wanted to out. he wanted to tr- get he wanted out like he wanted out mm-hmm. of Washington. So he was. I think he was reiterating the situation from last year. Okay, so nothing new then. Uh, yeah, all right, because that's what I've seen, you know. Well, you know, Twitter, I say, course, they, leave, they, it up to, leave it up to people on Twitter to just misconstrue every single right, thing right. that somebody said. That's what I said. I want to listen for myself so I can be able to assess what he was saying. Yeah. But, I mean, even still, I, I, I wouldn't even be shocked if that was something that was going down just because something isn't right. Like I said, Montez and Chase, none of them guys, they don't look like they did last year. Like, I mean, even though the Tampa Bay game, they were, you know, pushed out, but – the rest of the season, they, they showed a lot of flashes. I haven't seen one flash yet from Chase or Montez. I mean, Chase was even flashing last year, like on the goal line. Remember the Pittsburgh game when he he was, you know what I'm saying, stopping running backs in their tracks for the right, goal he line. he smacked the shit out of Joe Burrow, Burrow. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, exactly, the hit he had on Barrel. Now, you don't see none of that this year. And it's like, what the hell? Like, I don't – I think we've won two games in a row without even forcing a turnover. I don't think you can um, call that kickoff could, a turnover. Even if it is, that doesn't count to me. I can tell you right <laughs> But, now. yeah, I'm pretty sure it's been two games that we haven't committed a turnover. And that, yep. that's, that, that's hard to win with. You, that is hard to win in this league when you can't force any turnovers on the, on the defensive side of the ball. You know, I mean, and you're supposed to be this really good defense, even though we, we know now they aren't. <laughs> but that's one of the reasons why they aren't a good defense. I mean, on top of the other issues they have with the third downs, they aren't forcing any turnovers. And the guys just don't look like they did last year. And I don't know what the hell is going on. Yeah, man. Um, so – uh, before we get up out of here, I'll, I'll give the, the phone number once more. Let me see if I still have it here. here. Uh, there's a number. Um, if, if somebody wanted to get one last call out, we can. Uh, there's a there's a number for you all. Uh, 443-242-4479. Let us know where you're at. Um, is this something that's fixable? Is this something where you're like, uh, this team is actually is actually in trouble and it's, it's showing its face right now? Um, so... Dre, you you brought up a uh, you brought up something really interesting about these players, and I and I'm very thankful, I'm very thankful um, that we had Bill Nolan 
uh i think that was his, bruce nolan excuse me bruce nolan on last week because he kind of spoke he kind of spoke first and foremost everybody if you aren't if you aren't subscribed or even on checking out the youtube channel uh we have the clips check out the bruce nolan clip that i put out there about the the, the science of being a uh being a fan um he like he broke it down the best way you can kind of explain things dre uh you spoke truth just now about chase young you spoke truth now about Montez sweat and just the defensive line in general when we're trying to understand what is going on with certain players it's easy to just blame the coordinator like, that's the easy thing to do. Like these guys aren't being put in the right position. The coach needs to change or he needs to switch things up. All these, all these things that has very little to do with the individual themselves. Chase Young is not playing good. He's not getting pressure to the quarterback. Some of those defensive linemen just aren't getting pressure to the quarterback at all. And while those numbers from pro football focus tallies up and you think that those numbers are impressive, Guess what? I seen the dude. I'm not even gonna shout him out because he he gets he he is very, very annoying. Um, he gets very annoying at times, especially when it comes to Washington, because he he gets defensive and he calls he calls others like crybabies. But I'm like, in my head, I'm like, bro, you gotta understand. The only person that's crying is the person who is in everybody's mentions, copy and pasting every single thing, so you can so you can show off your your numbers your data that you found from pro football focus but not actually tell us what you're seeing like things like that he will tell you and others will tell you that these guys are getting pressure to the quarterback dre i'm gonna ask you right now there was about i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm round it up to about 20 20 total pressures that the defensive line had on josh allen there was zero sacks in the game dre how many of those pressures that anybody will try to convince you that these players had, how many of those affected Josh Allen's day as a quarterback, as a drop back passer? How many of those pressures really affected that quarterback? I didn't see any of them impactful or disruptive. <laughs> That's for me. Yeah, sure. You may have that with your advanced analytics and stats. They're going to come up with that. They look at the film. But watching that game, none of that looked impactful or disruptive. And that's what I'm looking for. None of them. I'm 100% with you. None of these pressures that you talk about, none of these pressures that you throw in people's face, none of these things that you think that, that these players uh, are worth bringing up, like these, these stats, how many, if they aren't impacting the game, pressures last year, Dre, we knew what those pressures did against these quarterbacks. We knw what this pressure did against certain teams, bro, because they impacted a throw. Like, some things actually impacted a throw, bro. The the, the interception that Cam Curl had in the, the Panthers game, you know what that was, right? That was Chase Young getting to the quarterback. He literally impacted mm -hmm. the throw. Um, and, and we're talking about a pressure, a pressure number. All right, I don't give a damn about that pressure. Uh, there needs to be something tangible. I think I used the word right, tangible or intangible. I don't know. I tried it. I tried it. Y'all, if I'm wrong, correct me. <laughs> but we need to see something tangible or visible, like in our face, that's telling us that this pressure actually impacted the throw, actually impacted the quarterback. Um, yeah, high high mentioned none, but it's hard to tell when everyone is wide open anyway. And yes, that is a fact. Uh, that secondary is a, and, and linebackers is an issue within itself. Uh, and, and that's kind of the thing, right? Where we're understanding, yes, the, the secondary and, and the back end is a problem, but we have to try and take into account everything. And sometimes it's hard when one, one side or a multiple units are playing one, worse than the other. But when a, when a vaunted, vaunted defensive line is, is talking about, they want to break the sack record. They want to, they want to do numbers this year. They want to do all these things and Chase Young don't even got a sack, bro. We're we're four games in <laughs> at all. We're four games in. Like you, you guys want to do these things, man. Uh, I the the reason why it's easy to criticize and, and I will not hesitate to criticize is because he welcomes it. And I'm not gonna stop doing it. I'm not gonna sit here and say he's a bust either. And I'm not gonna sit here and say he's not gonna be an elite uh, an elite talent. But he has to navigate through these issues that that he's seeing um, and that he's dealing with right now. 
uh, in order to become a better player. And, and in this moment, in this moment, Dre, uh, I think it's completely fair to criticize Chase Young and criticize that defensive line until they yeah. get things together. Absolutely. And like you, you said this on Twitter, I noticed before, you said that these players need to be held accountable and they hold themselves accountable to a high level. So why can't we as fans hold them accountable on a high level? Like I said, we praise these guys when they go out there and do things, do great things. Then we want to critique them when they're not playing up to their capabilities. Like I said, we've seen what Chase can do last year. He didn't win defensive rookie of the year for nothing. We've seen what Montez Sweat could do last year. We thought he had his breakout year last year. Now, these guys don't look half of what we've seen out of them last year through three games so far. I mean, yeah, it's still early. Of course they can get going at some point, but something isn't right. And we can, we're calling as we see it right now. These guys aren't doing enough to impact or disrupt games. Like none of the three quarterbacks that we face look uncomfortable at any point in the game. And that's what you, that's what you want to see. You want to see your defense, you know, kind of, especially when guys at this talent level, you want to make quarterbacks uncomfortable. None of those guys have been uncomfortable. Like I said, Josh, Allen was smiling the whole damn game. Like I said, when they had it was one one time Tress Way punted it, I think to the three yard line. That was the easiest ninety seven yard drive I ever seen in my life. Like it was just routine, just pitch and catch, pitch and catch, you know, down the field, ninety seven yards, touchdown, easy money. And that's just routine. Like it doesn't matter where we pin them at. These offenses feel like they can do what they want on our defense at any point. Absolutely, man. Um so I'm, a, I'm we'll we'll end it we'll end it with this. Uh one question is how can Washington turn things around? Uh there has been something going on. Where is it at? Washington Hawks Haven posted this. Uh, the most points allowed through the three games. Uh tied with first is the Lions and Chiefs with ninety five points. Second is the Falcons with 94. Third is Washington football team 92. Um, the, the question is, can, he, turn these, can they turn things around? Uh, Dre, again, open floor question. Uh, Mr. Mr. K.O., that's, that's Chase is looking like Ryan Kerrigan 2.0 right now. Uh, that's interesting. <laughs> um, I, would, but, I would take Ryan Kerrigan. <laughs> no bullshit. I'll, I'll take I'll take those sacks. Give me give me give me his sacks right right now. Ryan might he, he might disappear, but he's gonna have one game where he give you like two or three sacks in the game. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, like, in your your gut feeling, man. Uh, we, we got to be real here. Obviously, you can take emotion out of it, but just your gut feeling. Um, because obviously that. that just leave it at that. Your gut feeling, can they turn things around? Gut feeling, can, I mean, sure, they can. Um, I guess the better question is, Will. Yeah. Yeah. uh, As of right now, you are what your numbers say you are. So I don't think they can at this point. I mean, because, I mean, but then again, like I said, I hate being definitive on that because there is so much talent. I mean, even though they went through three games so far, it's like you're looking at it like, what the hell? That's why we're so pissed. We're not pissed because we have low talent level on this team. We're pissed because we have high talent level. At least that's what they've been telling us. At least that's what we've you know, seen in the past. So I guess if I had, if you got a gun to my head and say if I had to choose, I'm a, I'm a flip-flop right now and say, yeah, they, they, I think they will at some point. I don't know where. It might be too late by then, but I think they will at some point. Realize that, oh, yeah, we're good. <laughs> you know. Um, Zace, appreciate you checking in, man. Um, hope all is well with you. He said, yeah, this is a pivot, a pivotal point for Chase. Bunch of players go through this. Some figure it out, break through, and never look back, and some plateau. Uh, he got to figure it out, and I think he will. Um, Jerrion mentioned that he doesn't see them turning it around, uh, looking at the schedule. Um, that he said that Giants game showed a lot. Um, for me, Dre, uh, can they turn things around? I think that they can. Uh, I, I think the the issue, like ideally, I think that they can. I think the issue is actually overcoming the defensive struggles. Dre, if you cannot get off the field, bro, it is impossible. It will be impossible to turn things around because your offense isn't that good. Like, for example, the Titans last year, and I know this because of Rye, shout out to the Rye bum ass, but uh, the Titans, um, these guys had a really good offense last year. They could run the ball, but also they had Ryan Tannehill, who was a competent quarterback. Their defense sucked. Their third down defense sucked. 
Like he was so mad that they would convert the third and sixteens and things like that. Yet they still found ways to win. Um, we don't have that type of offense. Uh, whether we don't have a Derrick Henry is what I'm saying. We don't have those type of people. Now I do believe in I do like the offensive line and how they're molding and how they're developing. They're becoming better. Pass protection was really good against Buffalo. Um, I always thought that they was really good in the run game. Uh, there is something there with that offensive line. Um, I I, I just don't I just don't see the offense being able to keep up against teams where um, if that defense is struggling, like Tampa Bay, Green Bay, Kansas City, uh, those are their immediate teams. And then uh, Atlanta, a sneaky, a sneaky offensive team for me. Like It's hard for me to see them turning it around right now, um, like immediately. I, I think that when the, the schedule softens, you can kind of see them kind of getting back in the fold with this division so long as they aren't, what would you say like two and nine or something like that if they can find a way to to get at least to steal a win somewhere they can try and find their find their way back into the, the mode with the division man um so mr ko mentioned when you say turn it around do you mean playoffs division or just a, just to win a few more games uh ko I'm, I'm gonna give you that opportunity right quick before we get up out of here uh when i say turn it around i'm saying go from a projected three and 14 team to at least seven to eight wins Maybe even nine, because we ain't talking about playoffs right now. That defense ain't going to get you in the playoffs. Um, so what I'm saying is, uh, can they turn it around to at least show that they can improve and that what happened early on into the season, the first couple of games, was just a mere uh, happenstance issue, things like that. So um, that's kind of where I'm at with it. Uh, we're not talking about playoffs right now. This 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 is not a playoff team, and it is far from it. It is far from it. Um. All right. So, KO... I'm going to look for your response, but as everybody's checking in, uh, I do want to let, let everybody know that uh, schedule-wise, uh, we are not here tomorrow. We won't be live streaming uh, for tomorrow. We will be back. The, the, the Washington football side will be back Thursday, uh, previewing Washington football versus Atlanta Falcons. Uh, we do have a guest lined up to preview the Falcons game um, and see some things from their perspective. Uh, and then tomorrow, excuse me, Wednesday is the All-32 side of Chopper Die with a day one, fellas, man. We're going to check in. Uh, catch up on week week three um and then and look at our best bets for for the upcoming week and things like that um and then obviously we're back on game day we're back on game day uh sundays uh pre-game and post-game for everybody who's tuning in man we are around uh for 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 the long haul man the good the bad the ugly you did not catch me this week man i was just going through some things i, I explained it on stream too uh, I fucking hate losing, and I was so pissed off at my team, my flag team, bro. I could not. I there was there was there was no there was no good things that could have came out of me talking. <laughs> there there was no good things that could have came out of me talking after that game, uh, win or lose. There was just there was gonna it was gonna be hard, man. So with that being said, we'll be back on Thursday, Dre and I, um, and then I will be back on Wednesday to talk all thirty-two in the NFL recap. Um, so yeah, appreciate everybody watching. Appreciate the new follows, man. Appreciate all the love, man. Uh, Thursdays, we do have some call-ins as well. Uh, you have that opportunity to call in with us then. So with that being said, we out of here, man. Y'all be safe. Enjoy that night. Enjoy the Monday night football game. Peace. Hold hard in the trenches. Ask a nigga what he benches. Triple digits, nigga. Don't forget to mention. Hold hard in the trenches.